Hello and welcome to another video on Inkscape. In this video we'll be taking a look at the paint bucket tool. We're going to take a look at how it works, its controls and what we can do with it. Stay tuned. So let's take a look at the controls. If we come over to the left hand side and click on our bucket tool, we get our different options at the top or different controls. So the first of the controls is fill by. This is just where we determine what the program looks at when it's deciding whether or not there's a boundary. At the moment it's set to visible colors. We click on the drop down menu. So we've got all of the channels. So we've got uh, red, green and blue. We've got hue, saturation, lightness, and we've got alpha channel. So the alpha channel is opacity. So we can use opacity to determine whether or not um, there should be a boundary. Very handy when you're working with PNGs with transparent backgrounds. So the next one along is threshold. This is just where we can stipulate how exact the color match has to be. Zero is exact color match and you can go anything up to 100 to make it less exact so it cover a greater range of colors and opacities. With this I found that if you go above the 40s it starts to not be able to define a boundary. So if you start having issues and it's, it's not working, try reducing your threshold. The next one along is Grow Shrink By. This is for determining an offset. Uh, once the program's determined a border, it will grow or shrink depending on what value you stick in here. And you can dictate which units you're using. We'll leave it as pixels. Next one along is Close Gaps. At the moment it's set to None. You have the option of small, medium or large. I'll cover that in a mo. But basically when we flow or click into an area to fill it, it flows so far. And if it gets to a, a gap of a certain size, it will stop flowing. This just gives us a little bit of control. And finally at the end, we've got the tools, um, color settings or style. So at the moment we've got the fill set to blue and the strokes unset. So let's take a look how the boundaries are formed. If we zoom in, so here I've created some text at the top. I've just rotated the text slightly so it links up. I've got a star that I've converted to a path and I've blurred it so we've got this blurred edge. Down the bottom we've got a, a PNG image and over to the side I've got an ellipse with a gradient. So as you can see the PNG image and the ellipse are the same color at this point. So if we click on this area at the bottom you'll see it's come up with so if we click on it again you'll see it comes up at the bottom with area is not bounded cannot fill this because part of it's off the screen so if i zoom out a little bit so we can get the whole of the, the area that i'm trying to fill in the screen and then we click on the fill and as you can see it fills it determines where the boundary is by the threshold set at the top here so it's filled as far as it thinks possible if we increase the threshold, we press Control Z to get rid of that first. Increase the threshold up to 20 and we press the fill again. And you can see now we've increased the range in the threshold. We're filling a lot more of our ellipse at the top here. So as you can see, it completely ignores the fact that one's a PNG image and one's an ellipse and just fills both of them because they've got the same appearance on the screen. If we zoom in, so zoomed in, we can see that we haven't got perfect edge around here it works on the resolution of the screen rather than the actual resolution so it'll work differently if we're zoomed in or zoomed out so if we just press ctrl z to get rid of that i'm going to zoom right out and we're going to do it again from a distance now if we zoom in you can see that we've got much bigger gaps so although these gaps are bigger it does seem to have touched the black in more areas which for us would be quite handy because what we can do now is add to our selected area or our path by holding down shift and then selecting the areas that we've missed. That's one way we can improve how well the tool works. Hold down shift and click on the bits we want to add to our selection. So if we come back out, hit control Z to get rid of that lot. So we can also fill areas that don't have any color. So if we click in here, it tries to match the color and opacity. So obviously this is fully transparent. There's nothing there. So it goes as far as it's um, able to. So it fills in the transparent area. So depending on the threshold is how far it would go over the blurred star that we've got over this side. 
We can change it again, of course, by using the threshold. We wanted to make it exact. We could put zero. So press Control Z to get rid of the fill. Do it again. And as you can see, the blurred shape goes quite a way out here. We can't actually physically see it, but it's there. So if we Control Z, we get rid of that. One thing I do want to quickly show you. So let's now take a look at our star over here. If we click and fill on our star with our threshold to zero and run visible color, it only selects a small area in the center. Once the opacity starts to be reduced, it doesn't class it as the same color. But if we come up, hold on, let's get rid of that. If we come up and change our visible color to red, so it's looking at the red channel. Now when we click, what it's looking for is where the red goes to. So it's just looking for purely red. It doesn't care how opaque it is. And where we've blurred the shape, it's smeared the red right out here. Okay, we can't actually see it, but the red is still there. It's just very close to being transparent. The fill by gives us quite a nice bit of control. So well, let's control Z. We just do the opacity for a minute. Let's zoom out a little bit. This time we change our fill by to alpha. So we're on the alpha channel now. So we want to fill everything that's um, completely opaque. So these are all completely opaque. So if we click on here, you can see it goes as far as it can. So where we've got the text all linked together, we've got the ellipse and we've got our PNG image. They're all fully opaque. So it's filled a lot. It's stopped at this point because at this point there's transparency on our star. If we click on the center of this, we should better fill a little bit. It doesn't feel much, but yeah. As you can see, we can work with transparency as well. And it's very good for selecting um, objects so you can put boundaries on, which we cover in a moment. So that's th the basics of how it works. If we come over, we'll have a look at flow now. So I'll get my selection tool. We just get rid of this one, delete that. Now I'm gonna zoom in. Like I said, this works on the screen resolution and not the actual resolution of the art piece we're working on. So now if we try and fill, let's get our fill tool. We fill this one and it flows through the gap in between here. If we undo that and zoom out a little, so that gap shrinks on the screen. Now when we fill, it only goes so far. If we zoom in again, we can fill straight through, but then we can change our closed gaps at the top here. So we'll undo that. We go down to small. So in here, we've got small, which is gaps of two pixels or less. Medium is four pixels or less. Large is six pixels or less. So depending on what size gap you want, you can stop the flow through different size openings. So if we click on small and see what happens. So now when we fill, it stops our flow in the center. We could backstep that, Let's just increase it slightly. Just wanna make it big enough so it's on the screen. So now with small selected, it can still flow through this gap. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna undo that and I'm gonna change it to medium. And then we try again. So this gap is, four pixels or smaller. So this just gives us a little bit more added control over what size gaps our fill tool can flow through. Anything other than none does tend to slow down um, the tool and it has to sit there and think about it for a little while. But um, yeah, it can be, can be useful if you need to control where it flows. So the next thing I wanted to take a look at is gradients and how we can select multiple colors. If I just click on this end, Oh, we've got opacity, um, alpha channel up the top selected. So it looks at this, sees that the whole of the square is fully opaque, so it fills the whole square. If we change that back to visible color, we get rid of that and we try again. So this time I'm gonna click over here and it fills as much of the area that it determines to be the same color. We can, however, if we hold down our mouse button and drag, we can select more colors so if you notice, we've got all this deformation down the bottom of our selection. Now this is because we've gone from light to dark. This tool likes you to go from dark to light. So if we just undo that, we do roughly the same selection, but this time I'm gonna go the other way. And now we get a nice perfect selection. So when you're using this tool and using uh, click and drag to select a range of colors, what you wanna do is make sure you start at the darkest color and go down to the lightest color and you'll get a much crisper selection. So again, this works with um, any color that our drag line crosses. So we could start here, go up. We can just touch our black without going into the translucent. And there we go. So as you can see, where we drew our line, it's touched the black. So we've, we've gone through these different color ranges of the red and pink and 
just where we've got this gap here is where I went into the black and we've selected the black as well of the border which has drawn this blue line around the outside. So that's how you can select multiple color ranges in one go. So in addition to the click drag we've got alt click drag. Now what this one does is if we hold down the alt where we first put our cursor and click selects the color that he wants to match. So if I hold down Alt, I click on the pink in this ear, and then I'm gonna drag it across, right across here. What it's done is it looks for things that match the color where I started. So we might even be able to pick up that nose if it's a similar pink. So if we back step, so I'm gonna start here. So I'm gonna, holding down Alt, I'm gonna click here, I'm gonna drag down to this nose, and then I'm gonna drag back up to this ear. Oh, must be a slightly different color, it might be. Let's put that up to five and see if we can select it that way. Get rid of those fills. So this time we've increased our threshold to five. Let's see if we can pick it up this time. So hold down Alt, drag from the pink that we want, cross the nose, back up to the other ear. And now we've selected the different areas of pink. So these areas are separate, but because we've hold down the Alt, we've clicked on the color we want to match and we've dragged across them all. It's selected all the colors are the same. So we've got three different individual selections here. So when we use our paint bucket tool, what it actually does is it fills an area by creating a new path and filling that path with the color. So that path is separate from the area that we've clicked the tool on. So we can move that color around, we can adjust it, and it's a path in its own right. The last thing I wanna quickly show you is how you can add a border to a PNG image with a translucent background. So we've got this image here, it's fully opaque. Um, with the translucent background. So if we change our fill by to the alpha channel, so it's looking at opacity, we should better then come over, click on our shape, and it fills it. Obviously, if we look around the edges here, we zoom in, we've got little gaps. So I'm assuming these, these are gaps in the opacity. So one way that we could try to improve that is to increase our threshold. We could perhaps put that up to 20. A back step to get rid of our color. Zoom back out, so we've got the whole image in the screen. Now when we fill, you can see it's filled in all those little gaps. So that gives us a nice trace of the outline of our shape. But if we want to add a border, what we need to do is trace it, but we need to offset it. So to offset, so we come over, select our bucket tool again. We've got the alpha channel set. We've got a threshold of 20. Uh, we're going to grow it now. So we'll try 50 pixels, I think, to start with. And now we click on our fill. We've filled our shape. So we've got our selection tool now. We can drop our filled shape to the bottom and that sits it behind our PNG image. And we've now got this nice offset. Of course, you can change the color, yellow. We could change it to white, but it's gonna be hard to see. I did put this checkerboard background on so we can see things. Yeah, now that's just how you can add an offset to your PNG images. I hope that's been useful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.